What's up YouTube? Mike here. Well, this is Monday the 13th. So, I'm going to try something different this year. Maybe even a different video this year and see if I get any response off of it. So, please be patient with me. Uh, there will be other car videos, but I'm going to try some other videos and see if I can get some response off of it. Uh, all these red solo cups are not filled up with alcohol, so don't think they are. Um, I'm going to try to do a container garden this year. And y'all can learn, sit here and learn with me. Um, bad thing is I'll have to shoot a little bit of video, wait a couple weeks, shoot a little bit of video, and go on. So today is, I think I already said it, Monday the 13th. Uh, I got jalapenos in this first five set of solo cups, planted on 410. There's two yellow squash that was planted on 412. I have five cherry tomatoes that was planted on 410. Three more cups of squash planted on 412. I got five bell pepper and five radishes. So we're going to watch the progression of these and see if I'm a, even a decent farmer. But uh, we'll check back in in a couple of weeks. Guys, continuation of me trying to do a garden this year. The It's the April 16th. The radish are growing like weeds. The cherry tomatoes haven't came out yet. Of course the squash ain't because I did it a day before the first part of this video. Uh, the jalapenos hadn't came out yet and my bell peppers hadn't came out yet. I'm figuring a couple more days and I might see some life out of them. But due to the fact I don't have a big, very big backyard, and I think some of y'all seen it in some of the past videos, I'm going to do a container garden with some self-wicking five-gallon barrels and some tubs. I think I found some cow feeder tubs. Uh, that they put the molasses in. I'm waiting on the lady to call me back, but I'm doing a self-wicking container. Um, right here on the top, there'll be an inch and quarter PVC running all the way down to the bottom of the bucket. I oh, better get you back in the frame. Um, that you fill from the top. And then on the side of it, I got me a drain hole. That's three and three quarter inches up. Because the materials I'm using in this tub is Mountain Dew cans. Y'all can rave on me or whatever. Mountain Dew ain't good for me or whatever. But, geez. I mean, I started saving my cans uh, about, oh, when I first planted these. Which they were planted on the 10th. And I got 10 cans. So, I'm drinking 10, a can a day. But... I'm putting them in upside down. I drilled me a 516 hole there. And the top hole is supposed to be an eighth inch. But it's real hard to drill through aluminum. And that way you have this on the top so the soil doesn't get in there. And then you line them up in there. Okay, it takes 10 cans to do a bucket. Maybe 11. But I'm on, you know, I'll be mi minus one because that's where my fill pipe's going to be and then every bare spot that you see you pack that full of potting mix or potting uh soil do not use topsoil because topsoil don't wick and then you pack it full get it nice and tight and you get about an inch or so up above your cans and then you put a layer of fertilizer then you fill the rest of the bucket up oh and another thing i forgot to mention right quick on these self-wicking buckets if you notice, there's my drain hole. There's a, my can. I'm leaving about an inch of air in these cans. So every time I water them, I'll naturally force air in the bucket. And that helps keep air coming from the bottom from the top. And that's part of the way this thing works. So I'm going to show you all some more on this bucket. Uh, probably when I fill it up with dirt and stuff, uh, probably in another video. I'm not sure yet, but this is what I've been up to. Um, y'all see this probably in a week or so.
Okay, guys. This is a continuation of my self-watering or self-wicking buckets, whichever you want to call it. I cut the PVC off at an angle so it doesn't sit flat in the bucket. And I did something that nobody else does. I went ahead and drilled some holes in the PVC. And then let me lean this over so you'll see it. There's all my cans. It holds 11 cans plus my PVC pipe. And I'll fill it through here. And then all my excess water will drain out there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bucket, one bucket ready. Because I got 12 radishes here. One of, that one doesn't look too good. I'm going to go ahead and transplant it in the bucket. Uh, hopefully Monday I'll come up with some more buckets so I can start getting those transplanted. Uh, this is the 19th. I got a squash somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I got a squash. I don't know if y'all can see that. But I got a squash right there that's coming up. The jalapenos are starting to pop up. So maybe I'll have a decent little garden. But... Let me show you on here what I'm doing. And I don't know if this is enough to fill up the five gallon or bucket or not, but I'm taking one third peat moss and two thirds potting mix and mixing it together to put it in the bucket. I'm not gonna be able to show y'all everything, but I decided to use this as a measuring cup I mean, I could get me a gallon bucket or something and make it a little easier, but I did two of them and six of those for the potting soil, and I'm not sure that's enough to fill up that bucket, but I'm going to mix all that together and then put it in the bucket. So let me get that mixed. I wish I had a cameraman. Get that mixed, and then I'll put some in the bucket and show you what I did. Uh, radishes does not require any fertilizer, so I'm not going to put any fertilizer in this one, but let me show you. What I'm going to do. Because I had some camera malfunction. Uh, didn't record anything that I wanted to show y'all. Uh, but what I did. Is on this five gallon bucket. I filled it up about an inch above the aluminum cans. And I compressed the soil real hard. And Stella's sitting here licking the. Or sniffing it. Uh, and then after you do that except for on radishes, you know, radishes don't need any fertilizer. Then, after you get that first inch or so above those cans compressed, so I can wick up the moisture, you put you a layer of fertilizer in there uh, on a normal bucket. But this is not a, this is a radish bucket. I'll show you on the next one. Um, then, I, you know, finished filling it up. And it ended up taking eight of those tubs of potting mix and three of those tubs of uh, peat moss to get it. It's about an inch and a half down from the top after I watered it. Uh, that'll give me some room to put some uh, mulch or something on top of it to help hold the moisture in the bucket too. Uh, then what I did, if you see how that camera messed up on that part, is I took, oh, I don't have a garden hose sprayer yet, so I used a plant watering bucket with a shower head, and I filled it up, and I dumped all two gallons of water into this bucket from the top. Now, it didn't even fill up my water reserve yet because I didn't have no water coming out of the hole. So that means the soil and my water reserve already took two gallons of water. Uh, after this sits out here in the sun for another five, six, seven minutes, uh, I'm gonna take me a pencil and poke me a hole so I can move them radishes to this bucket. And I think I said this sometime in the video before, I'm just gonna go next year, I'm just gonna put my radishes in the bucket. Uh, I'm never gonna put them in the little peat cups again. Uh, they're kind of hard to transplant. Uh, but they're getting too big for that pot. I got too many of them in there, so I'm going to have to get them transplanted. And it's going to be time consuming, but I won't do that next year. I've learned my lesson. Well, the good thing about this bucket is, is I can go ahead and plant my seeds in the bucket. Um, radishes like cooler weather. 
and then if it's going to get to below freezing or whatever i can tip the bucket to one side make sure i drain out any excess water and then i can move the bucket in the house and keep it at room temperature in the house for overnight then i'll put them right back outside in the morning um so i'm gonna give this five or six more minutes and then uh take my pencil and put my holes in there and we'll go from there this is what i'm doing i'm gonna take the pencil and poke me a pretty deep little hole about two inches then i'm gonna move over about two and a half inches poke me another hole another hole another hole hole there and i probably can do a hole here you, you got to give them some space on radishes and a hole there and then i can put a hole here and a hole here and that's where I'll, I'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten radishes in this one bucket. Now this next part I can't really film. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and break the radishes out of this little pot, which I'll never do that again. I learned my lesson. I'm going to go ahead and stick them down in here. Uh, sm smash the top of the soil together. Then I'm going to water the bucket one more time and I'm done. Just wait and let them grow. All right, guys, I got 11 radishes in this bucket. And like I said, I'm learning too. I've never done this thing. Um, one thing I can tell you I ain't going to do is I'm never going to put them in these little, those little peat mosses again. I'm going to go ahead and put them straight in a bucket. That way I can control the seeds better. Uh, punch me a hole to drop a seed. Punch me a hole, drop me a seed. And go from there i'm not going to do it the way i did it this time ever again on radishes now the bigger plants i don't have a problem at all of doing it the way i did it do a transplant but this time i learned me a very valuable lesson i'm never going to do these like this again these look kind of sickly uh, a couple days ago i transplanted some from one peat cup to some other peat cups and in 24 hours they're all standing back up and they look fresh and green and everything so i'll let them sit out here in the sun and do what they need to do but i'm learning why don't y'all learn with me so if you like this video please comment please hit the like button uh please subscribe i'm a learning gardener i can't say that more than enough uh the container buckets the self-wicking buckets never gave them a try either so we'll keep you informed as i go along but like i was saying if you have a real small backyard uh this is the way to go you can get your pretty nice little garden and grow you some homegrown vegetables uh, if you want to in container buckets now i'm going to give you a view of my backyard there's my house corner of my house it goes over here to my monte carlo bar barn and then it goes over here to my fence and i got concrete and that's all the backyard i got i don't have room for a big old garden um sorry i moved pretty fast i'm gonna put four or five container buckets right here the bigger ones like that one um uh, i'm gonna hopefully use that one for potatoes but i hadn't had any luck for getting any of my potatoes to sprout yet so i can bury them uh i'm gonna line this porch i'm gonna get this porch cleaned up today or tomorrow and i'm gonna line this whole thing up with five gallon buckets and i'm probably even going to build me a little stand so i can put four five gallon buckets there because this whole during the morning this gets sun and during the evening it gets sun and then during the middle of the hottest part of the day it's in the shade so i've been watching it and i have about seven hours to eight hours of good sunlight right here on this porch so i'm gonna line them buckets up right here and i'm probably gonna build me a thing where i can put four buckets in one thing and it's gonna kill some of my porch space 
but I'll still have my backyard where I'm trying to get the grass grow and get it nice. But like I said, I'm rambling on. I better end this video. Hit that comment, hit comment, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you on the next one.